I want to talk about going stowed, uh, especially the considerations that are going to be different from going stowed skydiving. A lot of skydivers have developed bad habits, and some of them have not, but there's certainly things that we want to make sure we retrain transitioning into base. Okay? Remember from when we were going handheld, that there are two objectives of the pitch. And these are true whether you're a stowed or handheld. What are the objectives of the pitch? Do you remember? The pilot shoot in the clean air. We want to hit the pilot at the end of the bridle firmly, right? So firmly to the end of the bridle, which means you need to have a strong throw. And I want the pilot shoot to be in a good position to inflate when it arrives at the end of the bridle. So these are my two primary objectives. Have the pilot shoot hit the end of the bridle firmly and in a good position to inflict. That means a couple of things. It means you have to throw strong, but it means you have to throw in a good directed fashion so the pilot shoot moves to the end of the bridle in order. In general, that means that I want to see the pilot shoot travel like this. I should have the cap, or the apex of the pilot shoot, and then the ZP, and then the mesh, and then the bridle feeding out cleanly. The pilot shoot should travel in this orientation all the way to the end of the bridle. A lot of skydivers have poor pitch technique and end up rolling the pilot shoot end over end, which can put the bridle out in front. Here's what I mean. If I take this pilot shoot, I'll just quickly throw it in a mushroom pack. What we often see is that skydivers are taught to throw the pilot shoot as if they're throwing a ball which involves flicking their wrist to get a stronger throw because you're trying to throw firmly. The problem is when you flick your wrist, you often turn the pilot chute. So they'll take the pilot chute and they'll flick and put the bridle out in front. And then what we have is a rotation that involves the bridle wrapping around the pilot chute or just the pilot chute backwards. And that increases the hesitation rate of the pilot chute. We see a lot more pilot chute hesitations as the pilot chute has to shake around and right itself in order to catch the airflow. Okay. It also, every once in a while, every 10,000 jumps, results in some kind of bridle entanglement. What we see is, as the pilot sheet rotates, we have a flailing giant water bridle that comes out the front and interacts with the pilot chute, creating some entanglement hazard, and in some cases, passing through. We'll see, again, every long while, somebody land with a knot in their bridle. And that's because the pilot shoot has passed through the bright. Okay, This happens on skydives too. Do you know what this is? It's a good story. You tell it to your friends over beer. Dude, do you remember that time when I had a knot in my bridle? You tell your friends, get tired of hearing that same story over and over, and they tell you, shut the fuck up, because I already heard the story about the knot in your bridle. Okay? But every once in a while, the knot does not develop on the bridle. Instead, the knot develops on the pilot shoot. This happens skydiving too. I've seen this at the drop zone. On a skydive, do you know what this is? It's a pilot shoot. Yeah, it's a reserve ride and a good story. And you tell it to your friends over beer over and over. Dude, do you remember that time when my bridle nodded around my pilot shoot? Until they get sick of hearing a story and they tell you, shut the fuck up, because they already heard that story about your bridle nodding around your pilot shoot. But on a base jump, do you know what this is? It's a really bad story that I tell now. We've had several fatalities resulting from poor pitch technique in which the jumper's pitch resulted in an entanglement around the pilot chute. Here's one where the pilot chute itself basically rolled up and tied in a knot. Here's a couple more. This one, you can see just the very corner of the pilot chute was caught by the bridle. So most of that pilot chute is still active. This resulted in a towed pilot chute in a closed container impact at 15 seconds full terminal and the pins did not extract from the container. This one is obviously completely choked off. This bridle wrapped around the center of the pilot chute. This was actually a non-fatal incident. Uh, this was a jump off Sherog in Norway and the guy was high enough that he was able to reach back, figure out what was going on, and manually extract the pins by grabbing the bridle with his hand. And then he rolled over and got canopy into the airstream and actually survived the jump. Which is extremely fortunate and you shouldn't count on it happening to you. I know several other cases in which there were fatalities resulting from this sort of entanglement. I had a friend who died this way, I don't know, 15 years ago. That means what I want you to do is throw the pilot chute in an orderly fashion. So here's a couple pieces of video 
where you can see jumpers spinning the pilot chute. This guy exits, reaches back, and then watch him throw. What he should be doing is probably releasing the pilot chute here. He holds it, holds it, holds it. By the time it leaves his hand, it's already turned 180 degrees. He continues rotating, and he gives a pretty weak pitch, so it just sort of rolls around there, and comes all the way 360, so the bridle has completely wrapped the pilot chute. And you can see that as it hits bridle extension, it doesn't extend. The bridle is coming up, around, and over, back to itself, so it can't fully extend. See that? Eventually, it shakes its way loose, the bridle falls off to one side, and as it pops open right there, you can see a big loop of slack hits his bridle, and then it starts to extract. Right? Normally, this is our outcome. We just see a little hesitation, sometimes a big hesitation. I know people who do this on every single jump, and they have hesitations almost all the time, but they've been doing it for their entire base career, so they think it's completely normal. Here's another one. This guy exits, reaches back, grabs the pilot chute, and as he delivers, he should be releasing here, holds it, holds it, holds it, spins it. It's already upside down. It's just out of his hand's reach, and it's 180 degrees backwards. See the turn? Now it turns all the way around. Now it's done a full 360 before it hits the end of the bridle. And as it hits the end of the bridle, the pilot chute is choked off by the bridle. See the bridle over the top of it there? And wrapped around. And eventually, it does pop free. See that big loop of slack slip off and hit the bridle? And then it starts the extraction process. So he just ends up with a hesitation. But it could easily have been a much worse hesitation. So, we want to make sure this doesn't happen to you. That means what I want to do is I want to grab the rig you're going to jump tomorrow on the first snow jump, stand in front of the mirror, and practice throwing the pilot chute. There's a couple of techniques that work for the majority of people, and that doesn't necessarily mean it work for you because it's all about the relation between your arm and your release and the length of your forearm, so it's pretty complex. But here's the techniques that are most commonly successful. The first one is to throw and change the angle of your wrist as you release. One way to think about this is, as you throw, cock your wrist back toward yourself, it's sort of a shot putting motion, so that I throw like that, and the pilot chute stays in order, okay? Another way to think about it is aiming your hand. If you throw up that way, you usually roll your wrist up and spin, but if you throw down that way, you usually point your hand down. So think about where you're gonna point your hand. Actually, first, just show me your normal pitch, because maybe it's already perfectly fine. The other technique that works, and this is what I personally do, but that doesn't mean it'll work for you, is to grab the pilot chute backhand. What I usually do is I reach back, I hit the side of my rig, and I come down onto the pilot chute, and I grip the pilot chute between my thumb and forefinger like this. Then when I deliver, I'm throwing backhanded, and I don't spin my wrist. I don't know what's going to work for you, so we're going to put a rig on, and we're going to try throwing the pilot chute and see what happens.